David Graham is a speaker, author, businessman, former pastor, and founding director of Youth with a Mission Montana. He is also the author of the song, In Moments Like These. This song appropriately describes this podcast, which is a short, biblically-based, and encouraging devotional influenced by David's lifetime of personal moments. These moments are shared with a heart to encourage and inspire you to see Him, our Heavenly Father, at work in your own moments. I know this is David's heart in sharing because he has spent my lifetime speaking hope and encouragement into my own heart. If you would, take a few minutes and listen today. I am really proud of the things that he has done throughout his life, but what I am most proud of and grateful for is for the kind of dad, daddy, he has been to me. I remember it as if it was yesterday. I was running again down that same familiar country road just north of our subdivision on a late summer afternoon in 1982. And I could see the old foreboding cemetery almost a mile ahead of me, crouching low and lying in wait. My eyes dropped to watch the gray on rushing asphalt move with indifference beneath my feet. Once more, I was confronting the fear of death that was buried deep in my soul. After nervously jogging another 50 yards or so, I got irritated, really irritated. What is wrong with me? I screamed out inside. And then suddenly I remembered. I remembered what had been spoken to me earlier in the day from the old orange Nagai chair and what I was told to write down. Before finishing my jogging story, let me tell you what I was told earlier that morning. I'll need to do a quick recap. In our last episode called The Spirit in the Chair, I shared about my unusual meetings with the Holy Spirit. Meetings that took place in my ministry center office over three consecutive mornings in that summer of 82. And it was in those special moments that the Spirit of Truth, as Jesus so called Him, gave me ten valuable life principles Principles for living life with a new sense of significance, well-being, and purpose as one of God's sons and daughters. And it came to me that earlier that same day, the Holy Spirit had given to me the first two principles which He had told me to write down. Principle number one, David, listen to the Father and receive His power. I was immediately led to Psalm 57, verses 2 and 3, a passage that speaks of the power and protection that becomes our provision when we are focused on and listening to the Father. It says, I cry out to God Most High, to God who fulfills His purpose for me. He sends from heaven and saves me. Whenever we're listening, the Father wants to speak reassuring words of love and peace to us. The Spirit passed Psalm 94, verse 18 and 19 on to me. It says, When I said my foot is slipping, your love, O Lord, supported me. When anxiety was great within me, your words of consolation brought joy to my soul. Note that his consoling words replace anxiety with joy. And joy is power. My favorite verse regarding principle number one, and there were many, was in Isaiah 40, verses 29 through 31. It's this. He gives strength to the weary, that was me, and increases the power of the weak. I love that. It continues. Even the young grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord, those who listen, will renew their strength. Power. If we listen, he gives power. It was then the Spirit said, David, be aggressive with this power. And this was principle number two. Wow, I thought. Yeah, be aggressive with this power. It was then that I remembered once hearing an old preacher say, 
that all Christians spiritually posture themselves in one of four attitudes. They're either on the offense, the defense, in a state of detente, calling a truce, or running in retreat. The first one, offense, didn't apply to me very often. And for a while, the last one, retreat, seemed to be my only course of action. It's tragic that so many Christians live so much of their lives as if they were losers rather than winners. The same old preacher, with irony in his voice, then quoted Matthew 16, verse 18, where it says, The gates of hell shall not prevail against you. Then he said this laughingly, You know, to watch some Christians in their approach to life, you'd think the gates of hell had jumped off their hinges and were chasing them. But hell's gates don't charge God's children. God's children charge the gates. Now I heard the Holy Spirit saying, The Father doesn't want you emotionally healed just so you can cope. He wants you healed so you can conquer. The words really hit me. I needed a new mindset. I'd been on the run instead of on the charge. Romans chapter 8 immediately came to mind, and I opened my Bible to that chapter. My eyes quickly took me to verses 14 and 15, like it was the first time I'd ever really read these verses. And they jumped off the page. It said, Those who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. For you did not receive a spirit that makes you a slave again to fear, but you received the spirit of sonship. My eyes scanned down to verse 37. And all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. We're conquerors. Incredible. I was really getting it for the first time. We, the sons and daughters, have been released from the prison of insecurity and fear. And through the spirit of sonship, we have the authority to push back the enemy, enter a wonderful new dimension of peace, power, and emotional control. The Holy Spirit smiled one last time and disappeared. So ended morning one. Now back to my story. So, there I was, jogging along, voicing my irritation, and it hit me. The Holy Spirit had said that our Father gives us power. Our Father wants us to be aggressive with this power, to charge and conquer. David, I said to myself, Get it together. You're the father's son. So, with angry resolve, I lifted my head and picked up my pace. Glaring at my adversary, the foreboding cemetery, I clenched my teeth. I growled deep inside. And like Isaiah, I set my face like a flint. With an overwhelming passion to submit my full self to the father, and to deny any enemy any further pleasure, I lifted my head toward the sky and proclaimed, Father, this is your son, running for your kingdom, living for your glory. With both hands on my chest at a pounding stride, I repeated the words, this time shouting, This is your son. I'm running for your kingdom. I'm living for your glory. A third time now, now with my arms raised high, I yelled even louder for all hell to hear. This is his spirit. This is his soul. This is his body running for his kingdom, living for his glory. A fourth time, a fifth, I kept chanting the phrase. I could swear I heard a fearful scream of retreat as I charged the enemy's lines. It was amazing. It was awesome. The fear was gone. As I ran by, staring at the graveyard, my whole being tingling with power, I shouted in triumph, I am your son. I am your son. With tears on my face and great joy in my heart, I kept running north. And now I whispered the words over and over, I am your son. I am your son. Dear friend, you have been given something amazing. 
As one of the Father's many sons and daughters, you've been given new authority. You've been given new power. Just be and stay plugged in to your power source, your Father in heaven. Listen to his voice, receive his mighty power, and be aggressive with his power. I urge you to set your face like a flint and be determined to conquer over those things you've been afraid of. I speak with authority when I say, you can do this. Dear Jesus, thank you once again for paying the ultimate price so that we could become sons and daughters again, like back in Eden. Thank you, dear Holy Spirit, for coming to us, for teaching us, for counseling us. Indeed, you are the Spirit of Truth. And, dear Father, thank you for being our Father. And I ask you to help this dear one of yours today. I ask you to bring it on and fully empower this one to conquer like never before. Father, yours truly is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Let it be. You've been listening to In Moments Like These with David Graham. If you'd like to contact David or find out more information about In Moments Like These, please visit InMomentsLikeThese.com.